2020 has been a roller coaster of a year, the craziest year in living memory. The World Health Organization today officially designating a global pandemic. And it's also the year that I decided to quit my job and go freelance. Probably wasn't the best uh, timing for that one. Quitting my boring desk job, programming circuit boards, in order to chase a dream of editing videos full time, making impactful videos, working with creative people every single day. And over this year, I've edited videos for The Zach and Jay Show, Abby Roberts, and a load of other clients. But I've also experienced huge lows, massive losses, in my monthly earnings, losing big clients, burning out when that is literally your full-time job and you have to do that every single day. And at points, not feeling like I'm a good enough video editor to do this job, quite frankly. There can be such a barrier and a mystery around what happens actually day-to-day -day freelancing. And much like last year, I'm gonna tell you what it's actually like just 12 months on. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you how the pandemic, everything else has affected my monthly earnings in my first year of freelancing. And also by the power of uh, editing, my beard is gonna grow a lot longer. First of all, unsurprisingly, it's been a really hard year. It's the first full year that I've done freelance video editing. And that year was 2020, when there was a global pandemic. You must stay at home. And that meant that there's been a lot of months where my earnings have been very low, but then also some months my earnings were a lot higher. And I do consider myself quite lucky because I was affected, but I wasn't as affected as badly as some people were. Now, how did it all start? So I started freelancing in October when I quit my job. At that point, I'd done some small freelancing on the side, uh, but I'd never actually gone at it full time. And when I'd made that video in January, I'd been freelancing for four months. I was very inexperienced and I didn't really know too much what I was doing. I was using Reddit to get a lot of jobs, but those jobs were not worth very much money. It was like 20 pounds here, 10 pounds here, 40 pounds, working for free to build my portfolio. At that point, when I made that video, I'd probably made less than 200 pounds in four months. But things did start to look up and before the pandemic hit, I managed to get in a few clients and I think that is what saved me. And otherwise, if I hadn't have got those few clients in, I don't think I'd have made pretty much any money from video editing. I don't know, maybe I'd have made some. I would have made a lot less. I started on Reddit applying for hundreds and hundreds of jobs, editing small YouTube videos for small YouTubers. Probably about like one in about 20 people actually replied. And then that doesn't even mean I successfully edited a video for them. And that was quite a good way to start for me uh, because it really taught me about rejection and the fact that just because someone doesn't want you to edit their video doesn't mean that you're a bad video editor. But it did knock my confidence a lot getting rejected like so many times and then I also used to apply for a lot of jobs on Twitter, LinkedIn and just like message people, make these contacts, reach out to people so that they know you're a video editor. I don't know, maybe in the future they'll reach out to you. But it is really hard to have that belief in your work that you need to send your work out and believe that it's good work uh, when you are getting rejected and knocked back so many times. And I really did think like, am I good enough? Am I a good enough video editor to actually do this? Am I, am I as good as these other people who I see edit YouTube videos? Is my video as good as this YouTube video? And it is really hard. And you do have to just carry on, carry on editing videos, trust in the process that you will get there eventually. And a lot of people question whether you should work for free as a freelancer. I think that if I hadn't have edited videos for free at the start, I wouldn't have built my portfolio as well. And I wouldn't have edited as many videos and also got that experience of dealing with a client. So I don't think I would have got there if I hadn't have edited videos for free. But obviously you have to be able to transition those videos into paid videos. You can't carry on editing videos for free forever, else it's not gonna, it's not gonna get you very far. So yeah, that's what I did. Now pricing, like most freelancing, is hard as well. It really depends on the budget of your client. Uh, because I edit for a lot of YouTubers, the budget tends to be less. Whereas like clients from LinkedIn, tend to have a lot more money so you can charge a higher price. For me, pricing just kind of worked itself out. As I became a better video editor, I felt more comfortable with charging a higher price and I also had the portfolio to back that up. Like they weren't... Oh my God, it's muddy. 
But anyway, I legitimately felt like I was worth that amount of money because my portfolio said that, my LinkedIn profile said that. And sending footage back and forth, it depends client to client, but mostly I use a combination of WeTransfer, Google Drive, or Dropbox. Personally find WeTransfer is the best. And also file mail is quite good if you have large files to send and you don't want to pay for a paid premium service unless the client has anything else that I can use. And in the last video, I talked a lot about motivation. Another thing that I really, really struggle with is the motivation. But I've realized you aren't always going to be motivated, unfortunately, and you can't rely solely on motivation to get you through. Like, that's what I personally did at the start. Some days you are gonna wake up and you're gonna be motivated, you're gonna smash it out of the park, and that's gonna be fine. But then there are gonna be those days that you are unmotivated. And on those days, you have to be disciplined and you have to rely on your discipline to get you through. Because if you're not disciplined when you are unmotivated, then you're just, just not gonna work, your work isn't gonna get done, you're not gonna get it sent off to clients, and then the client is not gonna be happy with your work, and they're not gonna use you again, unfortunately. And things like that, managing your time, can be so difficult as a freelancer because you want to book as many jobs as you can because, like, the month before, you could have earned, like, little to no money, and that's happened to me, and then you get in this kind of, like, wave of lots of people wanting you, but, in that wave it's so easy to overbook your time and then you're like oh shit, i don't have enough time to physically edit these videos and that's really important that you manage clients expectations and you're not saying oh i can have four videos done for tomorrow when you're not realistically you're not gonna be able to get them done like there's no point in pleasing clients by saying something that isn't realistic with like your income being so kind of like fluctuating it can be really hard to like actually book some time off for you because life is not all about working you need to have some enjoyment and although I really enjoy my job and it's by far the most enjoyment I've ever got out of any single job I've had it's still important to not get consumed in that and to have some downtime you know go on a bit of a holiday probably not this year but you know just have a few days where you watch the TV, you know, play a bit of Xbox, whatever you like doing, make sure as a freelancer you make time for that. And I feel like this year I haven't really done that. I've had very limited amounts of days off. Uh, I had a nice amount of time off over Christmas and I really realised how important that is. But that's about the only week I've had off over the whole year. Knowing that your income will fluctuate and you kind of have to be comfortable with that. Um, and knowing that, yeah, I don't have many clients in now, but I will do. And because I didn't have that experience, I really just, you know, I was like, I need to get clients in all the time. I need to be working all the time else I'm never gonna have any income because the next month I could have nothing. I really struggled with that and I really needed to get away from that. I can remember at one point in the year, I worked like 72 hours in three days. Uh, there was not much sleep getting done in those in those three days. But it is starting to rain, so let me get inside and tell you about my earnings over 2020, how much money I've earned and how much my income has fluctuated. Hang on a minute. Um, my, my, my beard's... It's, it's just gone again. So, what you all came here for, my monthly earnings. January, I earned £300. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but I was actually really pleased with that. It was the most money I'd ever made freelancing in a month. And they were some of the first videos that I've edited for money. It may not sound like a lot, but it was a good month for me. February, I earned £75. I only did a few odd jobs off Reddit, and I really did struggle to find any more clients and build off that decent-ish month of January. In this time I did a bit of working for free, I tried to build my portfolio with those videos and really tried to market myself on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. I did a lot of LinkedIn video which was working quite well at that point but we didn't see any of that money in February unfortunately. March, I earned £1,760 which sounds crazy because that's the month that the world just went crazy. It's because I did so much marketing, put myself out there, working on LinkedIn, um, trying to get people through Reddit. Um, it really did pay off in March and I got myself a few regular clients and because most of my clients are YouTubers and I edit YouTube videos, the pandemic didn't affect 
filming too much. You could film at home, uh, you can film on your DSLR. There doesn't need to be a team behind you to film. So my clients just carried on pushing out videos. At this point, I wasn't too affected. I was extremely lucky. April, I earn 2,300 pounds. Now, like I said before, with YouTubers not being affected too much and they could still post some sort of videos, the clients that I was editing for decided to double down and actually posted more videos, put more effort into their videos. And as an editor, I'm really grateful for that because they could have literally been like, eh, it's the pandemic, we're not, we're not gonna bother. But I think there was a light at the end of the tunnel that this thing could be over quickly. We post loads of videos, everyone's gonna be sat at home and everyone's gonna watch it. May, I earned 2,350 pounds. It was much the same as April, to be honest. June, I earned 1,700 pounds. A bit less than last month. It was kind of much of the same, really. It still felt a bit weird, like I was fearing for a lot of uh, clients letting me go and I kind of almost expected that at some point. And some did, I, I did get less videos to edit. I earned slightly less money, but it's still all right. And I was very grateful, to be honest. July, I earned 500 pounds. For me, this is actually when the pandemic had the most effect, to be honest. YouTubers kind of, is all good at the start when you film like two or three videos, but when you get into like five, six, seven videos and you still got to think of new video ideas that you can do inside it's hard and when I'm not earning as much money I try and market myself make my own YouTube videos go on LinkedIn create LinkedIn videos you can always tell when I'm, um, when I'm <laughs> not on work because I'll be posting on social media a lot more <laughs> a little secret there and just a quick one if you are enjoying the video hit that like button subscribe and leave a comment it really does help my channel out, so I'd really appreciate it. August. This was a lot better. I managed to find new clients and a couple of existing clients came back. I'm not really sure why July was so low and August was so high because not really much changed. Freelance is just like that. You always have these ups and downs of like loads of clients wanting to edit their videos and then no clients wanting to edit their videos. That's why it can be really hard. September. I earned £1,700. Uh, which is good. I was happy with that. And I'd also taken the conscious decision to do less hours freelancing. I decided to take a step back because at this point I was beginning to burn out a little. I had like edited videos flat out for like nearly seven months. Is that right? Eight months, nine months, 10 months, however many months it was. And I hadn't had any holiday. I hadn't had any days off really. I'd just been constantly editing and I needed to take some time off I also would have gone crazy. In that time, I concentrated a bit more on my own videos. I feel like editing these videos, there's a lot less pressure. I don't have a client being like, yeah, do this, edit that. We want this, we want that. It's chill when I edit my own videos. So that's like, sounds strange, but that's a bit of a break for me. <laughs> October, I earned 1,880 pounds. It was much the same as September, to be honest. I think I edited for the same people, it was much of the same. I still worked quite a lot on my own videos and I made a, a big plan. That was when I was planning this whole moving away from travel videos and into more answering questions. November, I earned 2,500 pounds. And uh, there was a lot of projects that I wanted to work on, so I chose to edit them. And then I had a lot of clients coming back at the same time. And so I had to edit those videos as well and all of it just got crammed into one month. And it just shows even if you do put time aside to edit your own videos, sometimes that just doesn't happen. I ended up working a lot of hours in November. <laughs> December, I earned zero pounds, unfortunately. Um, I decided to take a week off, take a break over Christmas, you know. It's been a long year, especially long year for all of us, to be honest. And then I was also due to be paid, but I have to chase clients and invoices and I haven't done that yet, so I haven't been paid. But that's how it goes sometimes as a freelancer. You have your ups and you have your downs. Now 2020, it probably wasn't the ideal time for me to quit my job and become a freelance video editor for the first time. But I got through it. I earned enough money to keep the lights on, you know. It kind of fills me with confidence that like, if I can find jobs through a pandemic, like, you know, what's gonna happen when, I, next year when hopefully it's gonna be a normal year, is it? <laughs>
Oh, I don't want to look back at this video and be like, oh my God, what happened in the future? It's like at the end of last year's video, I said 2020 is going to be the year where I travel more. Well, that did not happen, did it? It just shows there's no real perfect time to do anything. You could find the perfect time and it'd be perfect. And then you quit your job and you go do this new thing that you want to do. And then a pandemic hits. Like just now, now is the only perfect time to do it. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something out of it. I hope you feel like you've learned more about what goes on freelancing day to day and what kind of money you can expect to earn in your very first year of freelancing. If you did like it, remember to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you in a couple of weeks or whenever for a new video.